Hey, what's going on guys? It's Patrick, back today with a 2.0 version of my best MIDI controllers video. The first video was one of the first videos that I ever made for this channel, and you guys just showed so much love. The video, I think, has over 250,000 views now. And in the past year or so, I've learned a little bit more about YouTube, a little bit more about how to create some better content for you guys. So today, I wanna to talk to you about my favorite $100 MIDI controllers. I got a few here to go over with you, as well as a couple of honorable mentions, and hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of which MIDI keyboard is right for you. Also, as a way to say thank you for all of your support on the last video and just on the channel in general, I've got a giveaway for you guys. Details for that will be at the end of this video. So let's jump right into it. So starting us off today is the Akai MPK Mini. And listen, this is the only keyboard from the last video that we're gonna discuss today, but it's for a good reason. This keyboard controller comes in at just under $100 on Amazon. And there are several reasons why this is one of the most popular MIDI keyboards that you see being used today. So let's talk about some of the key features we have a synth action keypad with 25 keys, that's two octaves. Obviously over here you have your octave controls so you can switch between different octaves. We have eight velocity sensitive programmable drum pads. These are MPC style. Akai makes some of the best drum pads. And these drum pads are the biggest out of any of the keyboards that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. And it's nice, it's nice to have a little bit more drum pad real estate. Just a little bit more fun to play in my opinion. So here's a quick little demo of the drum pads. and you could program these however you like. We've got eight little programmable knobs up here. You can map these to software instruments or parameters in your mixer. These are nice to have. And instead of an individual mod wheel and pitch wheel, you have this little joystick here. They call it their four-way thumbstick. Let me demo this thumbstick a little bit for you. Uh, so if you move the thumbstick up and down, this is gonna be essentially your mod wheel. So in this case, the modulation is controlling the vibrato of the synth. And then if you move the thumbstick left to right, you're controlling the pitch. So you can do some really cool stuff with this thumbstick. It's definitely functional. It takes a little getting used to, but it's really nice to use. And it certainly solves the problem of how to get a mod wheel and a pitch wheel on a device this small. So let's talk about some pros and cons. Pros, I would say this is the best travel option you're gonna find at this price point. They packed a lot of features into a device that has a relatively small form factor. So this will go in your backpack, your laptop bag, a shoulder bag. You can put this in the front pouch of your guitar bag. Whatever you're using to cut your gear from point A to point B, this can easily come with you. Which is a big deal today because the MIDI keyboard has become a massive part of a lot of producer and songwriters workflows. So you wanna be able to have something that will come with you wherever you're going to work. There aren't too many cons. I do wish the keys were a little bit more velocity sensitive. And I also have read some not so favorable reviews about the build quality and the keys falling apart. That hasn't been my experience, but I just wanted to mention that for those of you who are considering this keyboard controller. It is, for the most part, made of plastic. Some people might consider that cheap materials or poor build quality, um, but I think that's what makes this thing super lightweight and super portable. So listen, there's always gonna be pros and cons of every single piece of equipment that you're considering. You have to consider the things that are most valuable to you and your workflow and then use that criteria to make a decision. I think this keyboard controller is a great option for beginners and intermediate level producers and beat makers. Also, anybody looking for a travel option, this is probably your best choice, or even something that isn't gonna take up a whole lot of real estate on your desk, also a great choice. So, that's the Akai MPK Mini. Oh, and obviously links to everything that we talk about today will be in the description below for you. So next up, we have the Nectar Impact LX25 Plus. And this is a little bit bigger than the MPK Mini. This MIDI keyboard is obviously not gonna be your top choice for a portable travel option. It's doable, but just look at the size comparison. I mean, come on. This is the better option if you're looking for something to travel with. This is more for something to keep kind of in the studio, something that won't take up a whole lot of space, but is still gonna have a few more features than some of the more compact options. So let's talk about those features. I'm sure that the first thing you notice are the 25 full-size keys. 
so nice to have. The keys alone are the reason why a lot of people consider this to be the best keyboard controller at this price point. The full size keys are just so comfortable to play, especially if you have a background in piano or keyboard, you're gonna feel right at home. Personally, for me, I like MIDI controllers with features that take the computer keyboard and mouse out of the equation as much as possible. So if I'm writing or composing, I want as many of the control features within the digital audio workstation controllable from the controller surface itself. Right on the controller surface, you can see that we have some transport controls as well as some other controls. You can move back and forth between tracks and instruments. You can control some aspects of your mixer. You can play, pause, record, cycle, stop, fast forward, rewind, all right from the controller surface. And for me, that's a really big deal. Again, we've got eight velocity sensitive drum pads they're a little bit smaller than the Akai MPK Mini's drum pads, but they're a little bit squishier. So if that's something you're into, this might be a good option for you. So let me demo these drum pads for you a little bit. And what that little extra bit of uh, squishiness, if you will, gives you is just some added playability and lets you dial in velocity a little bit easier. For example, on a hi-hat pattern... Again, this is all about preference, but the squishier drum pads are nice to play. Again, we've also got eight programmable knobs, and we also have uh, one fader over here, and this is also programmable, so if you wanted to do something like a volume swell or something like that, you could do that with this fader. Very nice to have. We also have a pitch wheel and a modulation wheel. So pros and cons, on the plus side, you have a lot more functionality and customization with a keyboard controller like this. You have your transport keys, you have some different function keys over here that will help you navigate through your DAW and through your project. And personally, I'm just all about efficiency, so I'm always gonna favor features that speed up my workflow just a little bit. And once again, picking out the right MIDI controller is all about finding the features that are most important to you. I guess on the downside, you could make an argument that this thing isn't great to travel with, but I also don't think that that's really what this keyboard controller is made for. For a while, my main MIDI keyboard was something in this form factor. I used the M Audio Code 25, similar 25 full-size keys. I just liked it because it had a few more drum pads. But what I will say, working every day with something in this form factor, it's really nice just to be able to move it around. You can have it on a stand or side table next to your desk. You can have it right on the desktop. Whatever you're feeling, this is a really easy size to move around your studio. So if portability isn't a huge deal to you and you're looking for something with full-size keys and some more functionality than some of the other controllers at this price point, this is a great $100 option for you. So last but certainly not least is my personal fave. This is the keyboard controller that I travel with. This is what I grab if I'm leaving the house and going to a session somewhere. This is my personal choice based on some of the things that are most important to me. So if you've seen some of my videos, you know what this is. It's the Mini Lab Mark II from Atoria. And let me just say that I've used a lot of MIDI keyboards over the years. I used Amorio for a lot of years. I've used Akai. I've recently tried this Nectar MIDI keyboard and they all make different products and have different strengths. But more recently, I've switched entirely to Atoria and here's why. First of all, Aturia just has superior build quality. Now I have their top of the line Keylab Mark II MIDI keyboard, and it's fantastic. But all the way down to what I guess you would call their entry level model, this Mini Lab Mark II, you still see a lot of the same attention to build quality. This thing has a significant weight to it. It's got this metal back plate, um, and maybe that's not what you're looking for. Maybe you do want something a little bit more lightweight, but for me, it's nice just to feel the quality of this. Yes, the, the main shell is plastic, but it is kind of like a nicer, higher grade plastic than some of the other ones that we looked at today. The knobs are nice and long. They have kind of a rubberized texture, which makes them really easy to grab and use. And they're super, super smooth. Super buttery smooth, baby, I love it. Again, we've also got eight drum pads. Those are great to use. And then this is a really interesting take on the mod wheel and pitch wheel. Instead of actual wheels, you have these little touch strips, which actually work really, really well. So let me demo these two touch bars for you. And first we have our pitch control. And it's really easy and intuitive to use. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. It's really, really functional. And then over here, our modulation.
And then finally, the key bed is second to none, especially at this price point. I'm, I'm so surprised at how nice the keys are to play. I mean, obviously I prefer something full size, but these are really nice to play. They're not quite as small as the MPK Mini. They're a little bit longer. The keys really have a nice feel to them. They play really nicely, really great velocity sensitivity. So let's talk about some pros and cons. And what I haven't mentioned with any of these keyboard controllers yet is the included software. Because with the first two, there's not any included software that I'm gonna personally use. That of course doesn't mean that it's worthless. It's just not anything that I personally see a tremendous amount of value in. Of course, in the description below where I link these products up, you can look up the included software and all of the specifications. However, with the Mini Lab Mark II, there's some pretty good included software. You get Ableton Live Lite, which is the introductory version to Ableton Live. Ableton Live is one of the industry standard digital audio workstations. It's great for beat making, great for electronic music, really all music, but more specifically geared towards those first two. The other piece of included software that is great to have is Analog Lab Lite. And this is a personal favorite of mine. If you guys follow me or know me or listen to the music that I make, you know that a lot of my sounds come from Aturia Software Synth Collection and their Vintage Key Selection. And Analog Lab Lite will give you 500 of some of the best software synth sounds you will find. This is a great introduction into the world of Aturia synth sounds. So it's a great included piece of software to have. Another plus, I really like having some extra knobs to work with. I do a lot with software synth sounds and having some extra programmable knobs really makes my workflow a little bit easier. That's just a personal thing. Some of you may not need all of this, but just wanted to bring that up for you. And listen, as much as I love this keyboard controller, there are still some things that I would change. I kind of wish the layout was a little bit different. I like the the two rows of four for drum pads. I just like it a little bit better. Maybe it's just what I'm used to. And I do wish the drum pads were a little bit bigger. I'm way more preferential to the drum pad layout of the Akai MPK Mini. I just like the size and layout a little bit better. I'm nitpicking, but you know, I thought I would bring that up. It's hard to complain about the size of this thing because I think making it any smaller would mean sacrificing some of the features that I really like. But come on, you just, you can't beat the size and portability of something like this. I mean, Listen, there's always gonna be some give and take, and this is certainly still portable. If you've seen my what's in my bag video, you know that this comes with me everywhere, fits perfectly in my backpack, but still, this is the ultimate portable option. It's lightweight, it'll fit in any backpack, and let me put it this way, it's about the size of a 13-inch laptop. Shout out to Olivia for her pink MacBook here. And look, I'm cool with this size, it works just fine for me, but again, if you're looking for the ultimate portable option, MPK Mini, I think is the way to go. I think it's the portable champion. I think this is a great keyboard controller for beginners and experts alike. Again, the small-ish form factor will allow you to travel with this, allow you to take up less space on your desktop. And this is also great for people looking for a solid software bundle. So that is the Aturia Mini Lab Mark II. So listen, I know that everything that I talked about today was a 25 key option. And the reason being, I think these are the most bang for your buck options at the $100 price point. However, if you are in the market for something a little bit bigger and you still wanna stay at that $100 price point, Nectar and M Audio both make really solid 49 key options and both come in at under $100. So I'll be sure to link both of those up in the description for you. Of course, you'll be sacrificing things like drum pads to stay at that $100 price point. But if you want something bigger, these are great options for you. Finally, on a personal note, guys, I just wanna say thank you. I started making these YouTube videos a little over a year ago and the fact that I'm already making a 2.0 version of a video that has a quarter of a million views is just really crazy. So I wanted to show my appreciation by doing a small giveaway here. To be eligible for the giveaway, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel and then just drop a like and a comment on this video. When the video hits 100 likes, I'll pick a winner and you will have your choice of any of the three MIDI keyboards that we talked about today. I'll send you whatever you want. This will be a brand new keyboard. If you want the MPK Mini and one of the other colors, I'll send you that. This is just a simple way for me to say thank you and I hope to be able to do more stuff like this in the future. So that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I hope you found it informative. I hope this helped you find the keyboard control that you are looking for that will best suit your needs. Until next time, my name's Patrick. I'll catch y'all soon, all right? Peace.